Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Cure Neurology. We are continuing with Neuroimaging Concepts part 41 brain tumors so new imaging concepts we are talking about brain tumors but first an interesting question why brain tumors in adults are more common in supratentorial region and why brain tumors in children are more common in infratentorial region so why brain tumors in adults are more common in supratentorial region and why brain tumors in children are more common in infratentorial region? The answer is 80% of arterial supply to brain is to cerebral hemispheres that is the supratentorial region and only 20% of arterial supply is to the infratentorial region and in adults the commonest brain tumor is metastasis and metastasis spreads by arterial circulation because 80% of arterial supply is to the supratentorial region metastasis spreads to the supratentorial region in adults that's why brain tumors in adults are more common in supratentorial region whereas in children the commonest brain tumor is primary brain tumor and not metastasis therefore brain tumors in children are more common in infratentorial region so this is the explanation for brain tumors in adults being more common in supratentorial region and brain tumors in children being more common in infratentorial region yeah brain tumors the brain tumors can be classified into primary brain tumors and secondary brain tumors primary brain tumors are the tumors originating directly from the brain or its surroundings whereas secondary brain tumors are metastasis from primary tumors elsewhere in the body example lung or breast cancer brain tumors clinical features it can be divided into two categories general focal so brain tumors present with clinical features that fall into two categories general and focal general symptoms include headache with or without nausea or vomiting cognitive difficulties personality change and gait disorder whereas focal or lateralizing findings include hemiparesis aphasia or visual field defect so approach the frequency of various tumors in children and adults are as follows. In children, the frequency of various tumors are 1. Pilocytic astrocytoma 2. Diffuse pediatric gliomas 3. Mediloblastomas 4. Craniopharyngiomas 5. Ependymomas In adults, the various frequency of tumors in adults are 1. As I said, very common is brain metastasis, then glioblastoma, then meningioma, schwannoma, and pituitary adenoma. So, approaches the frequency of various tumors in children and adults are the following. Now, we should know the location of brain tumors. That will be a very interesting clinical approach. So, the approach could be either extra axial tumors extra axial tumors that is tumors arising outside the brain carom, brain parenchyma so this is the brain parenchyma so this is extra axial tumors arising outside the brain parenchyma or intra axial that is tumors in the brain parenchyma so the location of brain tumors is very important when we clinically approach the brain tumors one whether it is extra axial that is tumors outside the brain caren, parenchyma or intraaxial the tumors arising in the brain parenchyma so extra axial we have meningioma and schwannoma and intraaxial we have metastasis and glioblastoma so
so we have extra axial and intra axial so next is we'll talk about intra axial tumors glioblastoma very important there are certain clinching neuroradiological features of glioblastoma one there is a central necrotic mass central necrotic mass second there is edema that is surrounding edema third when we give a contrast there is contrast enhancement because glioblastoma or tumors cause disruption of the blood brain barrier and therefore when we give contrast it easily enters into the brain because of the disruptness disruption of the blood brain barrier so contrast enhancement is a very important neuroradiological finding then we have hyperperfusion hyperperfusion because of neoangiogenesis because of new blood vessel formation because as a tumor grows it needs a lot of increased blood supply and therefore new vessels are formed so there will be neoangiogenesis and there will be diffusion restriction because of the reduced extracellular space due to increased cellular density because there is an increased cellular density because of the tumor expansion there is reduced extracellular space and therefore there is diffusion restriction so these are all the very important points when we try to diagnose glioblastoma neuroradiologically one there is a central necrotic mass second there is edema three there is contrast enhancement four there is hyperperfusion because of neoangiogenesis five there is diffusion restriction because of reduced extracellular space due to increased cellular density now we'll talk about the extra axial tumor the meningioma in the meningioma very important neuroradiological findings are that since it it arises outside the brain there will be dural trail so we have dura matter the covering of the brain and therefore when there is an extra axial tumor like meningioma we have the characteristic uh, dural tray, tail and because it is outside the brain there will be bony changes and third there will be csf cleft fourth because the tumor is expanding the vessels get displaced and then there will be flattened cortex and five there will be cns meniscus sign so these are all the important neuroradiological findings of extra axial tumor like meningioma one there is a characteristic dural tail then there are bony changes there is csf cleft the vessels are displaced the flattened cortex and csf meniscus now we'll talk about the cellular tumors cellular tumors could be either cellular tumors or supracellular tumors the cellular tumors the characteristic example is pituitary adenomas for the supracellular tumors the characteristic example is craniopharyngiomas yeah now another important neuroradiological approach of brain tumors is to see the appearance of brain tumors by just looking at the appearance of various brain tumors we can diagnose the type of brain tumors easily first if it is multifocal if it is multifocal if it is present in lot of the brain tissue if it is multifocal it could be either cerebral metastasis cns lymphoma or multifocal glioblastoma whereas if there is calcification it could be either meningioma or craniopharyngioma or oligodendroglioma generally we see hypo intensity in t1 and hyper intensity on t2 but if there is hyper intensity on t1 and hypo intensity on t2 these are all the various tumors so if there is hyper intensity on t1 it is either due to protein rich cysts or hemorrhage or melanin or fat if there is hyper intensity on t1 it could be either due to protein rich cysts or hemorrhage or melanin or fat and therefore T1 hyper intensity is seen in colloid cyst, hemorrhagic metastasis, melanoma metastasis, and dermoid cyst. So T1 hyper intensity is due to protein-rich cyst, hemorrhage, melanin, and fat, and therefore it is seen in colloid cyst, hemorrhagic metastasis, 
melanoma, metastasis and dermoid cyst. If there is T2 hypo intensity, we have to think of CNS lymphoma. Then enhancement. If there is uniform enhancement, it could be either CNS lymphoma or meningioma. But if it is non-uniform enhancement, we have to think of metastasis or glioblastoma. If there is diffusion restriction, it, in, it implies there is tumor with high cellular density. Because of high cellular density, the intercellular space gets reduced and therefore there is diffusion restriction. So diffusion restriction is seen in tumors with high cellular density like medulloblastoma, CNS lymphoma or penilloblastoma. Then hyperperfusion. Increased microvascular density is due to neoangiogenesis, example glioblastoma. Glioblastoma as the tumor expands, it needs a lot of blood supply. So new vessels are formed. There is increased microvascular density due to neogenesis, neoangiogenesis, example glioblastoma. Metastasis. Now we will talk about metastasis. You can see the metastasis here. Metastasis generally arise from hematogenous spread, typically through arterial circulation directly or through the lymphatic system. Tumor emboli, like all emboli, tend to lodge at the grey-white junction and between the border zones because because the caliber of the blood vessels narrows at this site. That is the explanation for seeing metastatic tumors at the grey white junction. Why metastasis is very common at the grey white junction? Because the caliber of blood vessels narrow at this site. Lung, breast, melanoma are the commonest primary brain tumors. Sorry, uh, lung, breast, melanoma are the common primary tumors which metastasize to the brain. So this is about metastasis. So now the treatment of brain tumor. Symptomatic tre treatment. Glucocorticoids are highly effective at reducing perilesional edema and improving neurologic function within hours of administration. But of glucocorticoids we choose dexamethasone. Why dexamethasone is chosen as the preferred glucocorticoid? Because dexamethasone has been the glucocorticoid of choice because of its relatively low mineralocorticoid activity. Already brain tumors are associated with edema. So we don't want to we don't want to worsen the edema. So the dexamethasone is chosen of all the steroids because it has got relatively low mineralocorticoid activity and the dose is 8 to 16 milligrams per day. Among the anti-epileptic drugs, we choose drugs which do not induce the hepatic microsomal enzyme system. So anti-epileptic drugs, drugs that do not induce the hepatic microsomal enzyme system like levitaristam are used. Drugs like phenytoin are less frequently used because they are potent enzyme inducers that can interfere with both glucocorticoid and chemotherapy metabolisms. So drugs like phenytoin are less frequently used and drugs like levitaristam are frequently used because they do not induce the hepatic microsomal enzyme system. And then low dose subcutaneous heparin may be used as we know thromboembolic disease occurs in 20 to 30 percent of patients with high grade gliomas or brain metastasis. The definitive treatment, the definitive treatment, it is based on the specific tumor types and includes surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So these are all the wonderful neuroimaging concepts of brain tumors. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this lecture. The other important concepts of neurology, especially the exam oriented clinical neurology, I put it in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas. If interested, this book could be purchased. This book will be very valuable for students preparing and appearing for clinical neurology exams. The other important theoretical points of neurology, I put it in a question and answer format in a book called Focus Neurology, written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas, published by CBS Publishers and Distributors. 
this book contains all important neurological theoretical points in question answer format and therefore this book will be very useful for students appearing for oral and viva exams uh, if you have liked this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinuvas medical concepts which is india's leading neurology educational youtube channel so please like subscribe and share my youtube channel dr sinuvas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinuvas concepts thank you bye